Hi, this is a talk about conceptions that students have when they're starting university, especially those who have prior exposure to computing in schools. It's obvious that programmers care about making programs efficient. In fact, in prior work, we see that even beginning students care a lot about efficiency, even when they're told not to. Their views of efficiency have a significant impact on how they structure their code, often writing much poorer programs than they should. Therefore, what matters as at least as much is their beliefs about efficiency. In this work, we examine several questions. What do students think efficiency means? Where are they getting these ideas from? How accurate are they? What methods can we use to address their misconceptions? And how effective are these techniques? For context, we did this work at a highly selective private university in the US. It's an accelerated introductory course, so most of the students have had some computing in school, some of them quite a bit. We did our studies over two years using what we learned from the first year to inform the second. The paper provides a lot more detail. In this work, we use both multiple choice and free response questions. The multiple choice were classified using expert knowledge. The free response ones were coded by multiple coders who took several rounds to achieve a Cohen Kappa score of over 0 0.8. Coming back to our questions, what do students think efficiency means early in CS1? Unsurprisingly, students largely think of efficiency in terms of running time. Where do they get these ideas? They get their ideas mainly from past teachers and from internet discussion sites such as Stack Overflow. As an aside, it's not clear that we, the computing education community, have spent much time understanding the impact of such sites on our courses. It's also worth noting that many of them don't really have any conception which is interesting in light of what comes next. So what misconceptions do they have? To understand that, we need to talk about our setup. We did our studies entirely in Racket, a descendant of Lisp. This is because that's what the course was using at that point in time, but it had two big benefits. Both the syntax and programming style were new to most students. This ought to have minimized interference from what they had learned before. In the full paper and appendix, we discuss why, for instance, a made-up language would not necessarily have been a better idea. We showed students pairs of programs that both produced the same answer. We then asked them to compare the two for efficiency. They could say either one was more efficient, say they were equal, or say they didn't know. We also performed some interventions, which we'll get to later. I don't expect you to read the programs I'm about to show you, though you can pause the video or find them in the paper. What matters is that they tested different features. In this first triple, we make trivial syntactic changes that have no semantic consequence. In this pair, we compare a built-in library function with its handwritten equivalent. This pair does the same, except the built-in function is a higher order function. We set up this study so that all programs in each group are actually equivalent in performance. Therefore, we would expect to see lots of responses of equal. We would also be very happy with I don't know answers, given the unfamiliarity of language and programming style. What we saw was very different. We rarely saw either of those two answers in either year. In fact, these numbers paint a very optimistic picture by presenting the best cases, most of the time, over 80% of the answers were the wrong ones, that is, neither equal nor I don't know. Here are a few of their misconceptions. They have very naive models of how code relates to execution time. They don't understand the complexity that can lurk beneath built-in functions. They have little understanding of compiler optimizations, and so on. Note that none of these should be surprising. These are, after all, CS1 students. So returning to our list of questions, what can we do about this? We tried two different things. In 2020, we used a technique called the illusion of explanatory depth. It's been used widely in areas ranging from reducing political polarization to helping people understand mechanical systems. In 2021, we used refutation texts. 
How effective were they? They weren't. This work motivates numerous discussion points. Here are just a few of them. First, there's a question of what students transfer from their lived experience as computer users to their academic lives. For instance, how does something like binary search in a computer programming course, which takes logarithmic time, relate to Google search, which always responds in constant time to an ever-growing corpus? Do students think about these issues and, if so, how do they reconcile them? Next, what is the impact of curricula that asks them to count steps? For instance, here's one of code.org's earliest curricula for ages 4 to 8. From very early on, it'll tell you that you have used too many steps. Is this desirable? What learning objective does this address? More broadly, what is the effect of computing in schools? Are schools equipped to help students avoid misconceptions? And what role might they play in giving them to students in the first place? And finally, I believe we need a much richer understanding of how students perceive system performance and take it into account in the way we teach them.